After 36 years, fans have finally turned a fan theory into reality. Tim Burton returned with the famed poltergeist that many were intrigued by in 1988. With most stars uh, returning, Riona Ryder as Lydia Dietz, Catherine O'Hara as Delia Dietz, and Michael Keaton as well, Beetlejuice. We are also given a cast of new characters. Uh, Jenna Ortega as Astrid Dietz, Justin Theroux as Rory, William Defoe as Willa Jackson, Monica Bellucci as Dolores, and Denny DeVito as well as Burton Gorman. Taking the time of the first movie, Burton chose to recapture it in the 2024 sequel. And well, oh boy, Tim Burton certainly delivers. <laughs> As a Burton fan, I grew up with Tim Burton's movies, and I, without a doubt, absolutely loved his early work, the stuff that I grew up watching. And then in recent years, everyone has their bad days. It's fine. But this one honestly reminds me of why I became a Tim Burton fan in the first place. This one shows me that this man knows his stuff. When he's allowed to play in the sandbox and have his own feel with limited discussion from outsiders irritating him, it actually turns into something so beautiful like this. In the first one, he's trying to marry Lydia Dietz, and in the second one, of course, he's still trying to marry Lydia Dietz. But this time, he has a lot more at stake, and so does Lydia herself. I love what I really, oh my god, what I really love about this one is that it's a straight up continuation. Yes, there is 36 years between the two movies, but it also shows you where Lydia's been since the Maitlands. It shows you the fact that because of the Maitlands, she's now a famous person. She's now telling her ghost stories and jumping around as if she's a medium psychic, which to some extent is great for her, but not so great for her daughter Astrid. When they have forced to return home due to the passing of Charles Dietz, her father, that's when things get a little more chaotic and a lot more fun. Oh my god. This is very reminiscent of the first Beetlejuice movie. This is definitely a lot more playable and breathable. Um, I, I love that it felt more fleshed out. In 1988, the Beetlejuice, the first one, made sense because it was the 80s, Tim Burton was trying to find his grounding using characters that were not his own, but were rather using the influence of those characters. With this one, he has a lot more to play with. It's not just staying at the Maitland's house and playing with um, miniatures and um, clay models. Instead, it's, it's using a whole neighborhood. It, in a sense, there are times where it feels like Edward Scissorhands, but without Scissorhands himself. It, at times, it feels like he's channeling Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. At times, it feels like there's a little nod to his earlier works. As, like I said, as someone who grew up with these films, I, I can see a lot of his own influence from his early years. A lot of the influence of things that made Tim Burton, Tim Burton. And, and I think that is so beautiful. Each of the characters have their moments to shine, whether it be Danny DeVito's short 10 minute introduction, whether it be uh, William Defoe's uh, Wolf Jackson, which is makes sense, <laughs> or you've got uh, Dolores, who we kind of learn a lot more about. We, we kind of caught glimpses of Dolores in Beetlejuice 1, and I say that purely because Beetlejuice admitted that he had been with someone before. Um, as someone who was intrigued by where Beetlejuice came from in the first movie, like was he a con artist, was he a guy tourist who just happened to be a little pervy and got what he deserved, this one explains where he came from and now in the first movie he talks about how he lived through the Black Plague and seen the Exorcist and I think it's funny, he tells you where he came from and, and how he met Dolores and it was so fun watching this. Every sort of moment, every little beat, every score aspect, it, it felt very, very perfect. Now, the song Deo, which was famous in the first Beatles movie, makes an appearance, but this one has a lot more songs, a lot more songs that seem very fitting to the moment. My, uh, I don't even have a favorite scene, but I do have to admit, I did love the church scene. I did love the Latin, uh, Telenova scene, um, the bobs, all of them were so beautiful. We got a lot more fleshed out bobs. <laughs> um, uh, the, the way, uh, the little jabs at scam artists, the, 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 the exhaustion that mediums possibly go through, 
the 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 effect on life and living they're, they're repeated of you know in the first one how Lydia was a depressed 16 year old she's now got a daughter who's sort of in the similar aspect so it, it it's not quite frozen and tying but it is definitely grown up and still be capturing the time that it once was now it's pretty clear that it's still in 2024 whereas the first one it doesn't quite specify what year it's from I mean yeah we all know it was at least in 88 but we don't know what year exactly it's set in whereas this one is set in 2024 it's a lot more self-aware but also a lot more open and a lot more playful and jest there's even jabs at Disney man <laughs> and we all know Burton's uh interesting relationship with Disney um, but no I I think that if you loved the first one you were definitely going to love this one I know I did I know I have to go see it a second time because I went without my brother and he's very mad that I went without him but no uh, if oh, if you loved the first one you love this I definitely recommend go seeing it um, I know a lot of people like if you thought that Tim Burton was a bit of a mess of the last couple of years he's back all right he, he's definitely back. He's definitely got his flair. I was thinking, I was sitting through the end credits while I was packing up my stuff, and I was thinking about it. I was like, Tim Burton, when he's allowed to play, he's a lot more happier, and you can see that in his work. I, I found that when there's a lot more studio interference, when there's a lot more notes that he has to follow through, he's a very unhappy, and his films come off that way as well. But to see that he's happy, and to see that he's having so much fun playing, with his own toys it, it's amazing um, there is some practical effects there is some special effects this is definitely one that you'll love um, it's not as pervy as the first Beetlejuice because I forgot how pervy that actually was um, it is definitely a little bit more creepier there's a lot more open wariness with their swearing the f-bombs are dropped twice I loved the second one <laughs> um, my question is though, because we all know that uh, Jeffrey Jones has some allegations against him, y'all do know that he's going to have to get some like reimbursements for his likeness being used, you know that right? Like I was thinking about that, I was like, hmm, that's the only downfall of this part, that's the only downfall is because his likeness is used, but they do a very clever creative way. And I love how like the whole aspect of Beetlejuice is that it wants you to live, it wants you to live in the moment and care about the living yes it's great to mourn the loss of your loved ones but there's so much more out there go have some fun go live your life go explore and this one is definitely more about second chances and definitely more about the living whereas the first one was more about the dead and how we were very suppressed with, with the way that society has taught us to be rather than the way that we should be but yes Perfect little movie. Definitely great. Oh, by the way, I do recommend that you watch the first one before you see this one. So do a little revisit first.